All right, hello and welcome to Reconciliations. My name is Jeff. I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. Now, before I flip over to Excel, I want to zoom out and talk about our objectives. We are trying to compare two lists. We're trying to do a reconciliation. We want to ask things like, what values are in one list that are not in the other list? Or what values are in the other list that aren't in the first list? Or what values are on both lists? To demonstrate this type of process, I'm going to use a bank reconciliation as the illustration. Basically trying to automate these values, outstanding checks, deposit and transit, bank additions, and bank charges. So we want Excel to automatically calculate those values so that we can automate and streamline our bank rec process. Even if you don't do bank recs, the underlying techniques discussed will help with any type of list comparison where we're comparing two different lists. We're going to go through these basic six steps. And the sixth step is where it all comes together, where we retrieve all these values to automate the reconciliation. So you definitely want to stick around and check out that. All right, so I've exported a list of checks from my accounting system, a list of deposits from my accounting system, and a list of banking activity from the banking website. The first thing we need to do is get these loaded into Power Query. The way that we do that is select any cell within the table and go to Data. And from the Get and Transform Data group, we're going to use From Table Range. All right, this loads it into Power Query, where I'm going to give this a more descriptive name. I'm going to call this Book Checks. If there was any transformations or cleanup I needed to do, I would do it, but this looks good. So I'm just going to close and load to. And here I'm going to save it as a connection only query, and I'm going to click OK. Let's do the same thing with deposits. Select any cell from Table Range. I'm going to give this a new name. I'm going to call this Book Deposits. And this looks fine the way that it is. So I'm going to close and load two. Once again, I'm going to save this as a connection only query and click OK. And finally, let's pull this banking activity into Power Query from table range. And I'm going to call this bank all. And I'm going to close and load two. I'm going to save this as connection only query and click OK. All right. Now our three data sources have been loaded into Power Query. And now we can go through and create our lists. So we're going to go and create all of this stuff. And then the last step will be here. OK. First of all, a list of cleared checks. What this really means is which checks appear on both lists. And we want to generate a list of these. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to compare this checklist to the banking activity. But this banking activity has a bunch of extra stuff. So we first need to kind of clean that up and prepare it to be compared to this checklist. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to right click on bank all and we're going to click reference. And what this does is it creates another query that uses as its source the bank all query. So I click reference and I'm going to give this a new name. I'm going to call this bank checks. And now we need to do some transformations on this to clean it up so that it can be compared to our book checks. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of non-check rows. So depending on the way your bank export comes, you may need to do some additional transformations or some different transformations to identify just the check rows. But in our case, I'm just going to go ahead and apply a filter. I'm going to say I only want to see the rows that begin with check. And I click OK. And by the way, this is case sensitive. OK, now the other thing I need to do in order to compare this is I need the check number column to have the exact same format and data type as the books. And the book uses just the check number without this check label. So I'm going to go ahead and, and split this column. There's a couple different ways to do it. I'm just going to split it by a delimiter. And it detected space. If it was something different, you can pick something different. And I'm just click OK. And now I don't need this column here, so I'm just going to remove that. I'm going to double click to give this a more friendly label. I'm going to call it check num and hit OK. And now this is the same format and data type as my other list, so I can compare it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close and load to. Once again, I'm going to send this to a connection only query. All right. Now to get the list of clear checks, I'm going to go ahead and go to get data, combine and merge. And now I need to identify the two tables to compare. So I want to compare my book checks to my bank checks. And then I need to identify the common or lookup column. This would be the column that we use in VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP. So we just basically select the columns. Now these don't need to have the same label, but they just need to represent the same thing. 
And before I hit OK, I do want to point out this join kind. We're going to go in here and use different options during the rest of this video. But I want to point out a couple of basic high level ideas. First of all, the default is left outer join. That just means I want every single row from the first list and bring in the matches, if any, from the second list. And that could be fine, and we'll use that, and then I'll show you how to work it. But there are other options. For example, we could say only the rows that match, or only the rows that are found in the first. So we're going to use a couple of these different options during this video. For now, let's just start with left outer. This means I want to return every single row from the first list and pull the matching values that you can find based on these columns. And I click OK. Now, in here we have all of the rows from the first table. And then we have another column that represents all the matching results from the second table. In order for me to see this, I'm going to click Expand, and I'm going to click OK. And now we can see we have the check number from the first list, the check number from the second list, the amount from the first list, the amount from the second list. If I scroll to the bottom, I see that I have certain rows with null. What that means is they were found in the first list, but there was no matches found in the second list. Since the thing I'm trying to create right now is a list of cleared checks, that represents a list of values found in both tables. If I wanted to remove these null values, I could just use a filter to remove null and click OK. And that would certainly be one option. But there's another option. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this step, delete this step, and go back to this gear. And let's go ahead and revisit this match type. What I really want is I only want rows that match in both tables. So I'm going to select Enter, and then I'm going to click OK. Now this list is shorter, and let me go ahead and expand this so I can see what's going on. Now I see I have no null records. That just means this is a list of checks that are found in both lists. I don't really need this column, so I'm going to hit Remove. I'm going to rename this per bank. And now, what if we wanted to catch any situation where these amounts are different? For example, I wrote a check for one amount, but it cleared the bank for a different amount. Well, since my amount here is positive and this is negative, I could add these. If your banks uh, pull these in as positive numbers, I could subtract these. An easy way to do that is just select both columns, click Add Column, under Standard, select whatever you want. Here I need to do Add, so I'm going to click Add. And this gives me a new column of zeros. I'm going to go ahead and call this Diff. And this would allow me to quickly see that all the amounts match. Um, if there were any non-zero values, I could investigate that. Um, I could do that here in Power Query. I could sort it. I could filter it. I could do that in Excel once we get it back into Excel. But this will be a quick way to, to determine that um, the values from both lists match, as well as the check numbers. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and give this a new name. I'm going to call this Cleared. And I'm going to close and load two. Here I'm going to send it to a table in an existing worksheet and click OK. All right. Now we have a list of cleared checks. Excellent. Let's go to the next thing, outstanding checks. This means I am comparing two lists. I want to identify things on the first list that are not on the second list. In other words, I wrote a check, but it has not yet cleared the bank, so it's not on the bank list. So how do we do that? Well, same basic steps. Data, get data, combine, and merge. Once again, I want to compare book checks to my bank checks. And the lookup column is check num. In this case, I want to find the rows that appear only in the first table, which means they have not yet cleared the bank. They're not in the bank list. So I select that. I click OK. Let's go ahead and expand this so I can see what's going on. I click OK. These are all null. What this is telling me is that these checks were found on the book, and they were not found on the bank. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all that stuff. Now I'm going to call this outstanding, and I'm going to close and load to table, existing worksheet, and click OK. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and check the total row checkbox just in case I might need this total later. Uh, and now let's go to the next one, bank charges. What this represents is deductions that are made by the bank that I might not be aware of. In other words, what are any negative values that aren't checks that are on my bank list? So let's go ahead and prepare that list. I'm going to right click and reference. So I first need any negative numbers, so I'm going to use this filter. I'm going to say let's grab everything that is less than zero. And I've already analyzed checks, so I want anything that's not a check. So the way that I'll do that is with the filter, and I want to show the rows that do not begin with check. And I click OK. All right, and I'm going to call this bank charges. 
I'm going to go ahead and close and load to a table existing worksheet is fine. I click OK. We got that. Now let's go ahead and turn on the total row. There we go. Okay, next up is deposits in transit. All right, now we need to find deposits that are found on the book, but not on the bank. So what that's referring to is we want to find deposits that are made here, but that have not made their way over here yet. Now, before we get to that, I do want to point out something here. For this first deposit, we made it on the first for $312 it ultimately hit the bank on the 5th for $312. So there's a little delay. So there's not like a date or memo that I can line up. I have to kind of look at the amounts. The second thing to note is that sometimes I might have two transactions that hit the bank on the same day and they've been combined per the bank. So this isn't always true, but when it is, you know, how are we supposed to handle that? Well, we can aggregate these values first so that we get the value of 831 so that it matches the bank. So it kind of just depends on how your accounting system works. But if we wanted to aggregate these first so that this would have a total that matches to the bank, we can easily do that. We'll modify this query. Let's go ahead and go over to book deposits. I'm going to double click that to edit the query. I'm going to select date. I'm going to select group by. And this is basically saying group by every unique value in this date column. In other words, summarize everything for each date. And I want a new column, which is called total. And the operation is to sum the amount column. And then I click OK. And now this just aggregates or summarizes everything by date. I'm going to go ahead and close and load. And that's updated that one. And now what we need is a list of just the deposits. So to do that, I'm going to right click on bank all. I'm going to reference that. I'm going to call this bank deposits. And basically what we're looking for is any row that begins with the word deposit. And depending on how your banking activity goes, you may need some additional or different transformations. And I click OK. With that done, I'm going to go ahead and close and load to. I'm going to save this as a connection only query and click OK. OK, now we can do the comparison. Get data, combine queries, merge. I want to look at my book deposits and compare them to my bank deposits. I don't really have a lookup field, so I'm going to have to match based on amount. So if the deposits are unique every day, then this should be a really, really good start. If there's duplicate amounts or there's the same amount that hits on different days, this would just be like a starting point so that you could do some further inquiry. But in this case, um, I want to match based on amount. And I really only want the ones that appear only in my book because the other ones match. So what I would say here is rows only in first. And I click OK. Let's expand this. Click OK. This is going to all be null value, so I don't really need those. So I'm going to remove them. I'm going to call this DIT, Deposits in Transit. I'm going to close and load to. Table, existing worksheets, fine. I click OK. And let's turn on the total row. OK. And let's go to Bank Additions. And this just means there's some type of addition or deposit that the bank made that I might not know about yet. So to do that, let's right click bank all and reference it. Use that as a starting point. And what we're looking for is any positive amounts that aren't a deposit. So what I can do is I can apply a filter and say I only want to see them if they are greater than zero. And if they do not begin with deposit because we've already accounted for those. And then I'm going to go ahead and rename this to bank additions. And I'm going to close and load to a table, existing worksheet, click OK. Let's go ahead and turn on the total row. All right, so now back at the reconciliation. Power Query has done all of this stuff, so all we need to do is retrieve the values into the reconciliation. So where's our outstanding checks? It's equals this and enter. Where's our deposits in transit? Equals this and enter. And where is our bank additions? Equals this and enter. And where is our bank charges? Equals this and enter. And just like that, our diff is zero. And that is a beautiful thing. Now, I already know what you might be thinking, which is this. Jeff, it seems much easier just to do this manually, like with my ruler and my pen. I got you. It also might feel faster just to do it with something like VLOOKUP. And I totally understand that too. But here's the beautiful thing about Power Query. Once we have those queries set up, we really don't need to go in and change them anymore. Next period, when we have new checks, we paste in the values into this table. We have new deposits, paste. We have new bank data, paste. 
Then all we need to do is go to data and click refresh all. What happens is Power Query engages, it goes and pulls in all the new values, it does all the transformations, all the list comparison, and updates the tables. And that means really all we need to do is change our balance per bank and balance per book, click refresh all, and we're done. And by the way, in this short video, we can't get into all of the capability and complexity of Power Query, but it's a very powerful tool. And I wanna let you know that in addition to looking at check data that's already in an Excel table, Power Query can also go and look at an external CSV file. So if you've downloaded that from your accounting system and saved it as a CSV file, a text file, an Excel file, Power Query can go out and look at that as well. And that's what's great about taking the time to set this up the first month is that going forward, it is really fast to update. It's just a refresh all, Power Query does its thing, updates all these values, and then we're done. So if you haven't really used Power Query, it's bigger than what I can cover in this short video, so definitely check it out. If you use Excel often, be sure to check out the seven time hacks video. This is a collection of seven time-saving techniques that I wish I knew years ago. And I hope this video will help you streamline your reconciliations or list comparisons, where we have two lists and we're looking to see what's on one and not on the other, or what's on the other, not on one, what's on both, and those types of questions. Thanks for joining me. Hopefully this helped. Thanks, have a great day. This video is a production of Excel University.